Hi all and welcome back to the channel. So this time around, I'm going to talk you through how to add new disks to your FreeBSD installation. You've been using it for a couple of days now. Um, you like it and you've run out of space. You only installed it on a little SSD just to test it out. But now you need to add some more uh, hard drive space. So how do we do that? Well, we install the disks like you would with any computer. So you put in your SATA cables or put it into your um, PCIe NVMe slot. So you log into your FreeBSD server or desktop, whichever one it is, that you can check to see what's there. So if we go to our dev, forward slash dev, which is devices, and you'll see DA0 and DA1 and DA2. So we've put in two disks in here. DA0 is where the system is installed. DA1 and DA2 are the two new ones. So what do I do next? Well, let's become root because the commands we're going to do, we can't do as a normal user. There we go. We're logged in as root. So if we do a Z pool list, there's our Z root. Z root is the default install uh, Z pool for FreeBSD. So what do we do? Okay, so we need to create a new Z pool. Now we need to just decide what kind of Z pool we're going to do. Are we going to do a Stripe, a Mirror, or a or a RAID Z? Um, we can do a RAID Z one, Z two, Z three. Um, we're not going to cover RAID Z, RAID Z 1 to 3. We're just going to cover Stripe and a mirror. Um, so in a Stripe, minimum amount of disks we need is one. We have two new ones. Um, in a mirror, the minimum is two because you're mirroring. So in a Stripe, we can either add one disk or we can add two. If we Stripe two disks together, those two disks become one larger disk. So if you've got two 40 gig disks, they become 180. Slightly less with formatting. That's topic for another day. Um, in a mirror, you've got two 40 gig disks. They become one 40 gig disk, but there's redundancy there. So if one fails, the other one carries on in its place. So whenever you put disk data onto that mirror, it's put onto both disks and the operating system sees it as one disk. If that disk fails, like I said, it takes over. You can swap it out for a newer one. You can we insert it into the mirror and off it goes. It will synchronize and it will look like one disk again. OK, so that's great. So how do we actually do this? So the first thing we need to do is use the command said pull create and we're going to create one called media because we're adding some storage for a media server. It can be anything you like. It can be media, it can be data, it can be files, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Um, and then we tell it we want to create a mirror. Mirror is my preferred RAID level of choice. Um, it does tend to get a bit expensive when you consider that of those two disks, you only really get the space of one of them. But there we go. Um, so dev DA1, dev DA2. Boom, that's that done. So if we now look at our Z pool list, there's, there's our second pool. If we do a Z pool status, it will tell us the status of our mirror. It's online and everything's good. No known data errors. So that's great. OK, so we've done that. So in, in, we'll now go into our media. There it is, our media folder or directory. So what if we want to create something underneath that? We can create a data set. Data sets are great. They give you so much flexibility with uh, ZFS snapshots just makes backing up or copying snapshots across to various places so easy. 
So what can we do? We can we can create a so we can create a data set and we can call it media data. There we go. So if I list the contents, there's the data. It'll be empty. That's brilliant. So we've now got if I list our ZFS Z, uh, data sets, there we go. So that's brilliant. What else can I do? Well, I can compress these to really optimize my, my storage space. So I can do ZFS set compression equals gzip. This will take up a little bit more of your processing power, but it's minimal and it's well worth using. There we go. So that's now compressed. That's great. Um, there it is. OK, that's brilliant. So how do I create this stripe that I was talking about? I've decided that stripes actually the way I want to go. Um, well, that's simple. We do a Z pool create media and we don't tell it what kind of Z pool we want because the day the default is actually a stripe. There we go, that's created. And there it is. There we go, just under 80 gig. You lose some because of formatting. And again, we can do the, the create a data set underneath that and we can compress that. Okay, so that's great. So how do we delete data sets and Z pools if, uh, if we don't want them anymore and we wanna call it something else or just get rid of it altogether and take those disks out and reuse them somewhere else. Well, we want to destroy that data set. So how do we do that? We go Z pool, destroy, and the name of that Z pool. There we go. That should now be gone. There it is gone. So there you go. That's um, that's the, the fundamentals of adding new disks to FreeBSD using ZFS. It's fairly rudimentary and simple. Um, no rocket science involved in that. It's literally just the commands you saw me do. It's that simple. Um, there are a ton of features that you can do on, on ZFS. Snapshots is just by far the, the, the best thing, um, which we, we couldn't really do with UFS. UFS is a great um, file system, but it does not come with the features that you get with ZFS. I hope you found this, uh, this little insight into disks on FreeBSD useful. Um, and that you can use it in production or in hobby. Just play around, see how it goes. I'm sure you'll get used to it. Great little tool. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up. Cost nothing, it's free. Might as well do it. Subscribe to the channel and come back for more content in the coming days. Thanks very much. Take care.